Welcome to New York's number two sports show. The Rangers make a couple of transactions involving defensemen. And first, we'll discuss the Rangers signing Braden Schneider to a two-year deal. This was expected. And then we'll get into the Rangers re-signing Chad Ruedel, the veteran defenseman who was acquired this past trade deadline from the Pittsburgh Penguins. In the case of Schneider, uh, no surprise that he's uh, back as he was a restricted free agent. The question was maybe there was consideration for a longer-term deal. Instead, they go the bridge deal route, which is mostly what we've seen uh, the Rangers do in recent years with their younger players. And I can't say I totally disagree. They kind of almost had to do it, I think, from a cap standpoint. It, it ends up being a $2.2 million cap hit for Braden Schneider. Uh, and once this two years is up, he will still be a restricted free agent. So this is a player that, you know, is under control for quite some time, you know, came up at a young age and has done a nice job. Uh, he was called up in the, in the middle of that 21-22 season um, and really has been a regular in the lineup ever since. Rarely misses games. Uh, and, and, you know, so he is durable. And I thought he did take a step up this season. Not so much offensively, although, you know, it's not like he's been put in positions to really do so. Uh, but you can tell, like, he's he's someone that I think can develop into a pretty nice player. And the hope, really, is that he can maybe be a top four defenseman that can, uh, you know, certainly be effective and responsible on his own end and can chip in a little bit of offense as he gets a little bit older. He's still young. I mean, he, he's still 22 years old. He'll be 23 at the start of the season. But yeah, the 19th overall pick in 2020, who uh, that was the draft pick that the Rangers got for Brady Shea when they traded him to the Carolina Hurricanes at the deadline of the 2020 season. And, you know, Schneider, I understand why they wouldn't have wanted to maybe go longer term. The thing is, if you think that this is a player that will get better, it's in your best interest to do so because then you're getting him in theoretically a more of a bargain deal. But I also think that, look, Schneider, there is more to prove for sure. He's far from a perfect player, but he is one where I leave last season feeling not so bad about. And look, maybe it's because of the fact that I really did not like, and I think most fans would agree, the Miller-Truba pair was a disaster. And I thought the Miller-Schneider pair, especially in the regular season, was effective. So Schneider's uh, responsibilities did increase a bit. Not so much so, right? Like his time on ice per game really has been about the same for the three seasons. The big difference, and it's a little bit skewed, is in the playoffs, you know, averaging 17 and a half minutes uh, a night, whereas the year before in the seven game series versus the Devils, 15 minutes. And part of that, again, a little misleading because you're talking about a lot of overtime uh, games, which is going to jack up the ice time a bit. So you got to take that into account. But yeah, this is someone, look, he's never going to be an offensive dynamo, but I think that he's not like, he's someone that he can make a good pass, got a little bit of speed. Like to me, he's not a player that's really necessarily bad at anything, but he's also not going to wow you at this point either. Kind of a steady guy. And I think that the hope would be that he can take the role, like in some ways, take that Jacob Truba role, whether that be while Truba is on the roster or certainly when he's off the roster. So Schneider, this is a no surprise move. It was an inevitability and it comes in as a two year deal worth $2.2 million per season. So overall 4.4 million. And then also the Rangers bring back Chad Ruedel. Now this to me, I have no issue with, I really didn't think it would happen only because and, you know, the Rangers didn't really have uh, many significant injuries on the back end. He only played five regular season games at the Rangers last year. That was it. Thought he did okay in those five games. I, I couldn't really draw much of a conclusion. This was a player that was on the Pittsburgh Penguins for a very long time. Very long time. Uh, and right now, he is basically your seventh defenseman. Whereas this past season, he was kind of more of the eighth. Uh, where Zach Jones, to me, uh, if a defenseman came out, Jones was was the one that was going to come in. Now, when Ruedo was acquired, at that time, I felt like Ruedo was the seventh, but that was around the time that Jones's game really elevated. Uh, and so now, the way the 
the roster looks. And, and again, I'm still hoping for things to happen, um, but I'm not so confident that it will. So as of now, it'll be uh, Jones in the third pair and Ruiz will, would be the seventh defenseman. That all said, and I should mention that it's a, a league minimum contract, a one-year deal worth uh, 775 k and looking at Ruedel's previous contracts, uh, the most that he was ever paid uh, from a cap standpoint was this previous one that he was on, which was eight hundred thousand. So it's a slight, uh, slight decrease. But he was someone that he's always been on the cheaper side, and so from a value standpoint, not bad. Uh, a, a player that isn't going to provide a whole lot of offense, but uh, isn't he doesn't seem to be a train wreck, which is kind of just what you're hoping for, for a depth defenseman. You can do a lot worse than him as a seventh defenseman. That said, he's no lock to make the team right now. I think he would everything being equal. I think that he would make it. He's got the inside track, but if a young defenseman or someone else has a really good training camp, really good preseason, uh, there's nothing to say that Chad Ruedel could not be waived. So this is a completely low risk move. Uh, I have no problem with it. Uh, but it did come as a surprise, only because, again, didn't play any playoff games and only five regular season games with the Rangers. Uh, and the Rangers kind of thought somewhat highly of him as they did trade away a fourth-round pick in 2027 to get him, which is not nothing. I mean, the value on that kind of decreases because it was a little bit further down the road. But a fourth-round pick, hey, I mean, that's something for sure. So Ruida will be back. Uh, and like I said, I think he probably right now you can pencil him in as that seventh defenseman, and it's now the only bit of work done uh, for that, that'll need to be done for Chris Drury is the Ryan Lindgren contract. And to me, that's that's the most interesting thing. The Schneider thing we knew, the Riedel thing is a bit more on the minor news side. But Lindgren, what happens with that? Uh, how long will really the term? How long will that contract be? I'm hoping it's on the lesser side, uh, but I think that that might be it. I, again, I hope I'm wrong. I hope there's still a world where somehow Jacob Truba is not on this roster uh, come opening night. But I, I tend to think that he will be. There's still a lot of time. But this is, a you know, with, with the, the way the NHL offseason kind of progresses, you have a lot of activity around the draft and, you know, of course, July 1st. And then it really, it's always a reminder, there's just not a whole lot going on other than, you know, a lot of uh, restricted free agents uh, and some are arbitration eligible, such as Ryan Lindgren. And so that's why that is something that isn't going to happen right now. But I think that probably uh, probably by the end of the month, I think there'll be a resolution here uh, on the Lindgren deal. Uh, and, you know, is there a chance that he's traded? Yes, but it doesn't seem particularly likely. I think that Truba was the one that they kind of wanted to get rid of. Doesn't seem like that's going to happen. And so... Uh, you know, I, I think that Lingram will be back, but for me, I kind of would like his role to be a little bit less than what it is. I don't know that that's necessarily going to happen. And so that's kind of the shame of it all is I think this defense looks very similar to last year. The only difference right now is kind of Zach Jones, you know, taking on a much bigger role, Eric Gustafson out and maybe Truba. Like maybe the third pair is Jones Struba, second pair is Miller uh, Schneider. I don't know. But again, none of that really feels all that great to me. So I'm still hoping, but not optimistic that Jury has something up his sleeve. But yeah, a, a bit of defensive news here uh, in the way of a Braden Schneider two year contract worth $2.2 million per season. And then Chad Ruedel is re signed on a one year deal worth. So, uh, 775 uh, K and so yeah I, I think the next thing that we'll find out within the next few weeks is the contract situation of Ryan Lindgren but yeah uh, the offseason moves along and we'll see what else is in store for the New York Rangers